so these first two tabs are, let's see, did it change? There we go. Are there just to explain the two cases, right? Um, and so, I mean, I can, basically I'm just gonna read to you. I mean, I mean I'll just say what's already written here, okay? Um, so when you have a when you have a model where you just have an initial value, you can see the mouse moving. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. And and each uh, period now now depending on what you're doing, a period could be a you know like we could have something changing per mile or per minute or per month or per something, right? So it's a per something, right? So so for each period, um, yeah. you know, that's what the T is, the number of periods here. And then R is just a fixed amount of change, okay. right? So if I'm walking up a road and I go up, you know, and my elevation increases, you know, one foot per thousand mm -hmm. yards, for example, right? Uh, and I walk 3,000 mm -hmm. yards, right? Then I will have gone up three feet, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so that's it, right? That's with a fixed amount of change, right? So every, every unit of change, there's a fixed amount of change, right? Um, so that's one model. Okay. Okay. So a fixed, and we sometimes we call it absolute change, fixed change, right? So you know, like if if it was if it was money, like your money problems, right? This is like simple interest. Every year, you gain a fixed amount of interest, whatever, twenty dollars or something, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. That's different than constant percent change, right? And, and oh, and by the way, what are these tables showing? Just it just here, I'm just wanting you to look through this and figure out this on your own, right? So, you know, you have an initial value here. Um, in this case, the initial value is, is 1,098. All right, well, what is Q1 going to be? Um, you know, it's going to be, in, and then here's just all these various ways of doing it, but basically it's just the initial value plus, you know, the fixed change, right? So the change is uh, 34.82, uh, right? So uh -huh. we're, just, we're just adding that amount each time. So we just add that amount. I guess, I guess here these are all set to be uh, zero decimals. So if I added a few decimals, you'd, you'd maybe see the <clears throat> you could see the decimal part change. Right? Okay. okay. And then and then what is it going to be in the second period? Right. So it's going to be Q two is just going to be Q one plus my fixed amount of change. Right. Okay. Okay. But Q naught was just I mean Q one was just Q naught plus that change, and I've just added that change twice. Right. So you've got Q naught plus two of those. Right. So this okay. is just indicating how the model comes up naturally, right? I just keep adding the same amount each time, right? So the, the number here is just 34.82 bigger than that number there, right? The number here is just 34.82 bigger than that number there, right? Yes. So e each time I come down, I'm just adding that fixed amount, right? Um, right, but as a formula, you end up with this formula down here, right? So, the, so if I do this n times, then the final amount I get is Q naught plus n times 34.82. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's actually a little bit more on the sheet, right? So we could look at the percentage change, right? So the per how do we compute percentage change? So this is like topic two DQ one, right? Right. Um, so the percentage change, I just say this divided by this minus one, right? That's the formula I like to use. Yeah. All right. So the new value divided by the sorry, the, yeah, the new value divided by the old value minus one. Okay. So in so in this first um, round, there was three point one seven percent change, right? Um, in the second round, there's 3.07 percent change. And then it keeps going down. It keeps going down because this is a, you know, each each time we're doing a fixed amount of change, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, 34.82 is a smaller percent of 11.67. That I'm sorry, is a bigger percent of say uh, 11.67 than 34.82 is of 1,411, right? Right. So in other words, so here 34.82 just represents 2.53%, whereas up here, for example, it represented 3.17%, right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense because this number is getting bigger. So this is a smaller percentage of that number, right? Correct. Okay, now if we were to look at, you know, what happens if we were to do a percentage change here, right? So, so we have Q1, we have Q0 plus Q, uh, plus Q0 times that percentage change, right? Uh -huh. So when I do Q naught times the percentage change, well, that's just going to give me back the, the change, right? Yeah. That's how I get the change, okay? So, you know, I could look at these formulas, and that would be Q naught times 1 plus 3.17, okay? I could try the same sort of thing again, and then so Q2 is going to be Q1 plus Q1 times its percentage change. Now that changed, now it's 3.07, right? So I get that, right? 
And so now this is Q1 times one plus 3.07, right? So I can get that formula. You know, and I could get the formula Q0 times one plus 3.17 times one plus 3.07, right? Uh, yeah. Right, and, and we keep going, but it's not turning into any nice one, right? I mean, the, the best thing I could do in terms of a general formula like this would be, you know, QN equals Q0 times, you know, one plus 3.17 times one plus 3.07 times one plus 2.98 times one plus 2.90. Right, so you, you, you're not just getting a nice kind of closed formula like this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the point. If I have a fixed change, fixed absolute change, I get this nice model, right? And it's just like this. It's just the initial value plus n times the amount of changes. That's, okay. that's it, right? So that's a simple model. It's a linear model. It's a straight line. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, and the, the, this is the slope uh, right there, right? The, the 34.82 is basically the slope. I take one step in this direction and I go up 34.82. Okay, yep. Uh, and if you like, this Q naught is kind of the y-intercept, right? This is the initial yeah. value. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, now let's look at the other case where now we have, so now the actual change is changing, it's not fixed, but the percentage change is fixed, right? So that, that yeah. looks nice. Okay, so what happens if we look at our formula? So, so if I wanna find the new value, so I start off with Q naught, I want to find Q1. So it'll be Q0 plus this change, right? And then Q2 will be, mm -hmm. well, Q1 plus that amount of change, right? And I could say, fine, it's Q0 plus this amount of change plus that amount of change, right? And then you keep going down like that. So I could say Qn is equal to Q0 yeah. plus this, plus, you know, plus that, plus that, plus that, plus that. But it's not a nice closed form. I still have to use all these values, right? But if I look at the percentage change, right? So now that's where this is nice. I have a fixed percentage change, right? So Q1 is Q0 mm -hmm. plus Q0 times that percent. So that's, that's the percent change right there, right? Or, sorry, 0.35% uh, is a percentage change. The actual change is Q0 times that, right? Okay. okay. And then, yeah. and then I, can, I can factor out the Q0 and get this formula, Q0 times one plus 0.35. And we do Q2 and we do the same thing, just Q1 plus that increase in Q1. I can factor out the Q1, well, that's Q1 times one plus 0.035%. And well, now that's Q1 times this thing, times that thing again, right? So that's the same as Q0 yeah. times this thing squared, right? Okay. And, and yeah. that's the point. You're sort of looking at this pattern and saying, okay, do I see the formula here, right? And so if I have a fixed percentage change, Right. Then my nth iteration of this, after I after I do this in n steps, I'll have the initial value times one plus my percentage change raised to the nth power. Right. Okay. So this is an exponential model. Right. Yeah. So so that's it. Right. So there's the exponential model. Right. There's the linear model. Right. Or if you like, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it's also up here. There's a little cell up here that says what that is. Right. The linear model is this. Right. The exponential model is that. Right. Okay, and you go to your puzzles and you put in your name somewhere, I guess here, or some or a word or something. Okay, so I'll just put in part of my name. I think I just need five words, I think. <clears throat> okay. All right, mm -hmm. and it generates your data and stuff. And then you and then you um, then you have to do some computation here, right? So okay, so fine. I'm gonna first I'll just compute the change, right? So the change would just be this thing minus the thing above me, right? Yeah. Okay. And now I'm just going to fill that down, right? So, so yeah. that's not staying the same, right? This is not constant change, right? Right. Okay. So for percentage change, I'm going to take this thing, that's the new value divided by this thing minus one, okay? Uh, and you may have to add some decimal places. So let's see, I'm going to just fill that in. So that, that, okay, that looks like a fixed constant change, but it's all zero. That's probably not what you want. So add some decimal. Okay. okay, so we, we can see that, but it, but this is a fixed, uh, you know, percentage change, right? Now, I don't have it written as a percent, right? So the percent here would be minus 2.63%. So if you want to format it as a percent, you click this and add a couple of decimal places, right? So, um, right, so here in this, so what's going on in this sheet is I have a fixed percentage change. That's what I have going on here, right? Uh-huh. And so that's what you write here, right? So this is in percentage change and relative change mean the same thing, right? So here, okay. here you say it's this is a fixed relative change. Voila, right? 
Um, mm -hmm. what, is the, what is the fixed value? Well, the fixed value is that. And don't, don't type it in, but actually use the cell reference because there's more right. decimal over here, right? Okay, so there's my fixed value. Well, what is the formula? And, and you can do a couple of things here. You could go back and say, okay, so this is the constant percent change, right? So we're in this case here, right? And so, so this is our formula. It's the initial value times one plus the, the um, percentage change raised to the n power, right? So that's what we want, right? So, so here you could just say that the, the formula is going to be, um, you know, the initial value is just one, six, one, two. Now here I am just, notice that this cell's in blue. So it's really is just asking you to type in stuff. Mm -hmm. by hand, right, mm -hmm. you don't have to, you don't have to use cell references. You could, but I'm not really asking you to. All right, and then you can, then you can write here. Um, now I could write here plus a minus uh, 2.63%, right? Yeah. Okay. And then this is going to be raised to the, um, you know, T power. So this would be sort of the general formula with T up there, right? Okay. Um, right. And and you notice that this plus a minus six point two three percent. I could just write that as, um, let's see, get rid of the decimal. I could just write that as minus, right, like that. So so that's fine too. Right. That's the same formula. Okay. Right. So that's all I want here is the sort of the math formula. For this thing mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. okay and then and now here's here's just some reading we have to read up here so yeah we, we deposit some things in the bank um by the way roll ads are just dollars in reverse right okay um right and there's uh we got these first 12 periods in a period is what quarters right so we're mm -hmm. doing that four times a year mm -hmm. um and we want to know if we have a fixed Oh, so actually, these are these are going in. Yeah, this is the first twelve periods. So this is this is the periodic change. This is not the APR, right? This is this is period one, period two, period three, right? So this is yes. the amount of change each period, right? Okay, so we got to be a little bit careful about that. Then we're gonna go. We're gonna look at nine years, right? So how many periods are there in a year? It's four, right? That's what I all I needed there, right? Because we have quarter, right? Okay. Yep. How many periods in nine years? So it's nine times that. So 36. And notice again, you know, here I'm asking for a number, here I'm asking for a formula. So uh -huh. that, that's really all I'm asking for there. And then, and then what will this be in nine years? And now we just, now we've got our formula there. I just want to put it in here. Now I don't want to type it in. I want to use the cell references, right? So that's my Q naught times one plus, um, then my rate is there. I can just use that, right? And yeah. then raise to the that, right? So again, I, again, use cell references here. Mm -hmm. So I get I get that value right there. That would be my value. Okay. Um, okay. You can add some decimal places there, right? Shrink down some here you know, if you want to just sort of make everything look similar, right? So mm -hmm. you can see you can see this is decreasing as we go. Whoops. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's do two decimal places. You can see this is decreasing, right? After right. thirty six periods, this would have been down at six one seven. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's the that's the idea, right? And and so the other one, you do the same thing, and you figure out if it's a fixed change or a fixed percentage change, okay. and then you write you write down the corresponding model and you know all that stuff, right? So do the same yep. sort of thing. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, okay. it does. It's kind of funny. I think I turned off the video. You know, I was going to say maybe I have a video of this now, but I feel like I stopped the video. <laughs> did I? Did I or did I not? Um, Oh no, I didn't. Okay, yeah. So, so if you don't mind, I may take this and add it as a video now that we have it. Oh no, that's fine. Okay, cool. Then, then maybe awesome. you'll see a link. A link appears. Okay.